amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I was lost, but now I'm found. Come on, I want to you a praise partner and thank him for what he's doing right now at this very moment in your life. Glory, hallelujah. Amen to our guest, first, second, third time. Well, actually, first and second, third, your family, regardless. Amen. Second, we're already, matter of fact, the first visit, we're already starting the adoption papers. Second, when we're already in court, and the third one, it's finalized. Amen. So we thank God for you today. We. Thank the Lord for all the great things that are happening. Amen. For the choir. Can we give the Lord a hand praise for the choir and the praise team and the musicians? Amen. Amen. He's wonderful. He's wonderful. Please don't forget our February the 16th service. Amen. February 16th service uh, is right around the corner, matter of fact. And uh, we're excited about that. That is our friend's day, our friend day. You are our friend, and we, we encourage you to invite all your friends, all your family. Now, look, I understand because you're going to tell me you don't have a lot of friends. But then when I look on your Facebook page, <laughs> you got all these friends. <laughs> 20,000 friends and followers. Glory to God, huh? Yeah, I apologize for this mess we're having right now. Um, amen. Amen. So I want you to make sure that you invite everybody that you possibly can. It will be a blessing for us if you do that and to them. Amen. The Bible says no greater friend than a man that would lay down his life for his friends so go ahead and hit them on social media call them up stop by the house and invite them out so they can experience amen what you've been experiencing thus far in the book of leviticus the book of leviticus the 26th chapter verse 3 through 9 i'm not going to have you standing much longer just bear with us just a little bit Amen. Leviticus 26, 3. Can you get this, please? Leviticus 26, 3 says, If ye walk in my statutes and keep my commandments. Uh, you, you understand that first word is if? Huh? If you walk in my statutes and keep my commandments and do them, then I, this is God, will give you rain in due season. And the land shall yield her increase. And the trees of the field shall yield their fruit. Verse 5. And your threshing shall reach unto the vintage. And the vintage shall reach unto the sowing time. And ye shall eat your bread to the full and dwell in your land safety. I'm going to stop right there just for a second. Make contact with your neighbor and let's begin to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, as we reach out to our neighbor, to our friend, to our pew partners, we pray together for we're one body fitly joined together. That your will, dear God, would be established in this place. That our hearts would be receptive to your word. That our minds would be made up. That our direction would be directed towards you. Our will and our wants would be those that you have. That we would link lockstep with you. 
I pray right now in the name of Jesus, your God, that every home that's here, every family that's represented would experience a blessing a hundredfold and greater. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Before you take a seat, I just want you to shout this out with me, just one word, reach. Glory, hallelujah. Put your hands together and you may be seated in the house of the Lord. The word reach, as defined, means to stretch out, to extend, or to thrust. As to touch or grasp by exceeding a part of the body, extending, I'm sorry, a part of the body as a hand or an object. To pick up and to draw toward one, to take To hold on to, to reach. Today I'm going to talk to you obviously from the subject and the title reach. In the text, verse 5 is clear. It says that your threshing shall reach unto the vineyard and the, to the vintage, I'm sorry, and the vintage shall reach unto the sowing time and ye shall eat your bread to the full and dwell in your land safely do you understand what that's saying right there safely you will be in the land now I understand we using uh, words of old and sometimes people get kind of um uh, uh, lost in the text because they don't understand the principle of what's being uh, read. But the Bible, first of all, says if uh, we walk in his statutes and if we keep his commandments and if we do them, then he will allow rain to fall in due season. In other words, you may feel like you're in a drought right now. But if you just maintain yourself with God, rain is on its way. Now, I know sometimes we look at rain as something negative. Rain, rain, go away. Come again another day. But when you are living by the land, uh, you need some rain that you might have increased. Touch your neighbor and say increase. So here the text is trying to let you know that if you stay with God, I know the circumstance looks like drought. I know it looks like you might be in a dry season or a season of just enough. Uh, there's something to be said about just enough. That's a good place to be to have just enough. But uh, God wants you to have more than just enough. He says in one place that... Uh, uh, that in order uh, for me to give you what I'm going to give you, that is life, I am not just going to give you life. I'm not going to stop. It's just mundane life, but I'm going to give it to you more abundantly. Touch your neighbor and say, wake up, here comes more. So he says, if you just maintain, just stay there just a little while longer. Just stay on your knees a little while longer. Just stay looking up to heaven a little while longer. Stay in church a little while longer. Stay with the faith a little while longer. That in due season, the rain will begin to fall. I don't know about you, but if I was in the midst of a drought, it wouldn't take a whole lot to get me happy. One drop on a dry ground, I would just begin to lose my mind because what shouldn't be is about to be and the Bible says when the rain comes that the land will yield her increase and the trees of the field shall yield their fruits uh, as I said in verse 5 it begins to talk about uh, the threshing and then it begins to talk about the vintage and then it begins to talk about the sowing time if you were to understand that what that's really saying is uh, that when I begin to start blessing you there will not be any lack in your life uh, 
the, the, the book of Leviticus here, it begins to talk about here in 5, uh, uh, the barley harvest, uh, which is, was uh, established in Judea, uh, was about the middle of April. Come on, stick with me, preachers. The middle of April came the barley harvest. Barley was used to make bread. Are you okay with me? It was a grain that they had. Then after that, in the month of June, so you got April taken care of and May is taken care of. Here comes June. June hits and all of a sudden now comes the wheat harvest. The wheat harvest lasts approximately six weeks. Amen. All the way, six weeks later, all the way into the month of June. That is also a a bread harvest that is in the ability to continue to be blessed. Can I talk to some people in this place right now that sometimes, amen, the barley harvest is plenteous, but the wheat harvest fails. Can I talk to you right now? In other words, sometimes things are going good at the beginning of the year, but midway through, something begins to fall apart and we begin to wonder, will it be okay? But but here he's saying that I'm going to take care of you all the way into the place of April. Now, why April? Why, why do we start so late in the year? I'm about to show you. Amen. After, amen, the harvest, watch this, after that the harvest of the, the, the wheat came, then comes the vintage. The vintage was that which was grown on the vine. Amen. And the fruit gathering began to take place around the month of July. Now, we've covered April, we covered May, we covered June, now we're in July. And all of a sudden, we're we're trying to figure out that looks like just a few months of blessing. How in the world will that take care of the rest of the year? But the Bible says it's not going to stop there because you're going to be blessed then, but you're going to go all the way to the time of sowing. In other words, all the way around the clock to the place where you're about to plant a new vineyard to be grown. God says, I'm going to be with you right where you are and when you think it's about to run out check your cabinet check your cupboard they're still full why because the ground will keep giving increase day after day after day come on somebody I want you to understand what I'm saying so God is saying the rain is coming amen but you're threshing in other the gathering of your grain amen will reach to your vineyard. Somebody reach your hand out right now saying I'm about to get everything that God has for me. I'm not just going to receive some of it. I'm going to, oh come on, turn your hand over like a cup. Oh come on, bowl them up. Put them out. I'm going to reach them for everything that I was promised. The threshing will reach to your vintage. And the vintage will reach to your sowing. Can I talk to you in this place right now? The concept of reaching is putting forth the effort to go get what God has for you. Uh, I wish I just, can I get a dollar from somebody? Just one dollar bill. Come on. Uh, well, give me your credit card, baby. I need something. Uh, uh, come on, hurry up, hurry up. Run, 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 run. I'll give it back to you in due. No, I don't need a 20. I can't give that back to you. I just need a dollar. Glory. To that. We just keep it. Here we go. <laughs> come on. Thank you. That's exactly what I needed. Uh, one dollar. Pretend like it's a hundred. Uh, Y'all looking like what? Come on now. Now, Brother Caleb, come here real quick. It's almost a dollar meal. You got to add tax. Are you with me? So if you want what this is, what do you have to do? They're telling you. He's like, I don't know. Reach. If you want it, you don't want it. Then you have to reach. Come on. Come on. Come on. Sometimes things are out of your reach. 
But if you stay there long enough, wait. if you stay there long enough, what used to be out of your reach, I know there's some dreams you have that seem like they're so far out. Been reaching in the prayer room for five years. Been seeking for ten. Been pressing. But every time I get close. <laughs> Can I talk to you? He got that too quick. <laughs> I'm just playing. Can I talk to you? There's three things that we have to understand about reaching. One is that it takes action. You have to put forth some effort. Number two, that some things are out of reach. Y'all didn't want to hear that. And the third is probably the most frustrating. Some things are just out of reach. In other words, they're right before you, but you can't quite grab hold to them. It's like coming in second place in a race. I'd rather come last than come in second. What do you tell the man who gets second place? You was almost good enough. You all understand what I'm saying? And some of y'all are like, no, I'd just rather come in second because I won't get something. No. Uh, a, a true athlete is like, no, I don't, I don't want to settle for second best. I, I want number one. Just out of reach. Just, just enough. You, they won by a nose. They just were born with a bigger nose. They, won, they barely got across the line before I got there. I, I, if I had a little longer arms, I might have been able to reach. Something might have happened, but I, I was born without the ability to have that much extension. But the reality of what God is trying to tell you, that the ability for you to reach has nothing to do with your physical characteristics whether or not you have a man hops or not whether or not you have a wide span or not the gospel is trying the bible is trying to show you that if you would just dream big and stay on task then whatever god promised you regardless of what the devil says regardless of what life experience says regardless of what's going on around you regardless of how many times you got close but didn't quite get there if you would just stay in that place and not give up and not let go then God will bring the reach to you would you put your hands together and magnify him Oh, don't act like you haven't been there. You, uh, you, were, you were next in line, but then they shut down the ride just before you were able to get on. Don't act like you haven't been there. They ran out of your Popeye chicken sandwich. The person in front of you got it. And I don't even eat it, but I know some of you. Uh, you say you do I hear you over there uh, you see uh, some of us have been right there and it seems like we're always the bridesmaid but never the br oh uh, it seems like my turn won't come it's when will it be my occasion I've been praying and I, I've been doing what I said what God asked me to do I've stayed there I've walked in his statutes I, I kept his commandments and, and I try my best to do them both day and night but it seems like I'm still in the midst of a drought can I preach to this church right now that your drought is just an opportunity for God to create a deluge please understand the principle of dry ground dry ground when it's baked hard becomes hard like clay or like concrete when the rain begins to fall please pay attention brethren the water will not seep directly in to that ground but it will be diverted to a place that's prepared to receive it oh you're not catching what I'm saying uh, there are people right now it feels like you're in a trap but God is about to allow the deluge to move you from the place of nothing to the place of plenty. 
Oh, y'all better understand what I'm saying to you. You read about it and you see the floods taking place in California in a desert land. Been there, know what it's like. It's because the ground cannot receive the rain. But there is some ground, amen, that God has prepared. And if you follow the trail, you will find where the blessed people are because the rain God rains on the just as well as the unjust and when the rain begins to fall it will begin to come to y'all don't hear what I'm saying the wealth of the wicked who is it there for them? the righteous but that's those that walk in his statutes that's those that keep touch your neighbor and say keep if you don't keep you can't reach you got to be able to keep it you got to be able to be saved on Sunday and Friday too uh, okay all days in between you got to be able to live this thing when nobody around you is living it, when it's not popular to pray at school, when it's not popular, amen, to stop cursing and not to tell dirty jokes, when it's not popular to look like the world and dress like the world and talk like, when it's not popular, amen, to be booed up, when it's not popular amen and the flesh is saying one thing and society is saying one thing but God is saying I need you to stay with me keep uh, hallelujah doing what I said do keep my commandments and continue to do them and watch what begins to happen. I don't care how dry the ground is you're standing on right now I don't care how thirsty you may appear just wait just a little while longer because I promise you that there is about to be a drip why are you standing there why, why are you smiling when everything is going crazy Why are you acting up? Why are you dancing? Why are you shouting? You know you just got evicted. Because my reach, first of all, doesn't reach to my troubles. It reaches over my troubles. My reach doesn't reach into my past. It reaches into my destiny. You're looking at the dryness that I'm in right now. You measure me up by the situation of my life. You're looking at what I look like on the outside. But inside, there's something that's bubbling up that I know is about to ex You're judging me by my bank account. You're looking at what I'm driving or what I have. You're looking at where I am right now. But my reach is far beyond what man could ever do or perform for me. The only limitation on your reach is you. What are you willing to do for God? What are you willing to give up for God? Are you willing to lock in with him when nobody else around you? When your pew partner is trying to invite you to the club, are you still... Oh, uh, everything on a pew ain't saved. Can I really preach in this church right now? Be careful of those who try to draw you out. Uh, well let's go hey, your little bit won't hurt no a little leaven leavens the whole lump baby you get me mixed up in that I'm breaking a commandment and then the rain does not touch your neighbor and say just out of reach 
just out of reach time and time again. We battle with this one the most because we're there trying to be the best that we can be, but it seems like we fail miserably at times. Uh, I'm glad that I'm in a church full of imperfect people serving a perfect God because there are times when we have been praying and we've had to ask God, God, why hasn't it happened yet? It's just out of reach. I just heard somebody get a new job and I'm still unemployed. I I just heard the testimony of the new vehicle and I'm still unemployed. I I just heard somebody just found them a new place to live, but I'm still in the midst of seeking and trying to find. I heard somebody just got engaged and I'm getting old and nobody's even looking my direction. When will it be my turn? I've heard the prophecies, but it seems like, amen, they float by me and never land. I don't know, amen, what's going on, but I see it all around me and I shout when they shout and I cry when they cry but still something in the back of my mind questions when will it be my turn that's just out of reach just around the corner I can't quite grasp hold to what's going on and why it hasn't happened for me I wish I had a witness in this place that knows what it's like to almost get the raise to almost get the promotion but got looked over. I wish I had some people. You don't hear what I'm saying. God is maneuvering things on your behalf. Why? Because when he gives you something he is not giving it to you just for a season. Uh, The book here in chapter in verse 5 is not talking about a seasonal blessing. It says the rain will come in verse 4. The rain will come in due season. But when the rain comes, watch out now watch out when the rain comes and you're in the threshing in other words you've already harvested you can't thresh what you haven't harvested you're already blessed it may not look like you are but you're already blessed and what you're doing on a threshing floor is you're separating that which is good from that which is which is not can I talk to some of us in this place that are on the threshing floor right now amen God is removing some things some chaff is coming off of you some things that are no good for you are being broken free and it feels like amen you're being beat down but you're in the threshing room Uh, but it says that after the threshing amen when it should be over after that you had all the grain harvest it should be over it ought to be time now amen for a little nothing going on in your life now you're low on bread because you only brought in a little bit it seems like this is the normality that you have seasons of plenty and seasons of none but he's saying the call you have kept the faith because you have done what I require I am going to cause the harvest to come early and late come on somebody I'm going to allow amen the bread to last beyond the season that it should last when it should be an emptiness I'm going to give you plenty and then comes the vineyard it comes time for the vintage and all of a sudden your grapevines are busting over early in the season and your trees your fruit trees the pomegranates come on the apples the persimmons the whatever you like the grapefruit the oranges the plums and the peaches all of a sudden they're beginning to overflow Boughs and branches are getting heavy, and every time one falls off, here comes an- y'all don't hear me. Here comes another one. Why? Because you have to have enough to take you from now to the time of. Pl- the time, amen, of sowing. And while you're there, and the plenty is happening. What happens to man is we began to focus on the blessing and forget our God. For those of you that keep your mind stayed on him, he said that he would keep you in perfect 
peace. I wish I could preach this like I feel it. He's trying to let you know in this place today that if in the times of plenty, act like you still have nothing. Pray like you're still in need. Worship like you're still broke. Would you learn how to glorify him like there's nothing really happening? Glory to God because God has something in store for you that will carry you to a place where the fowler can't come in and steal your seat. He said that you will dwell in your land safely. In other words, the enemy might be on the outside of the gate, but can never come in. Can't pick your plant. Can't pick your pocket. Can't steal your blessing. Can't wreck your home. Can't destroy your marriage. Can't ruin your health. Can't take away what God has given you. Why? You're going to be in the land of safety. Watch this. Verse 6 as we try to speed it up for your sake. The Bible says and I will give peace in the land. Come on somebody. I believe right now that the the issue that the world is in is because the church forgot to stay on course. Why isn't there peace on the streets? Is because the people of God have forgotten their mission. We become complacent and started acting like the world, thinking we're going to win the world by being like the world. But the Bible says, "Come out from among them and be ye separate," saith the Lord. Come on, I'm on a mission in this place. And I got to keep it. I can't let it go because you don't want it. I got to stay on task. Huh? Why? Because I want peace in the land. And the Bible says, and ye shall lie down and none shall make. Can I talk to the people that have fear? None shall make you afraid. Ah, it doesn't matter what the enemy tries to do. None can make you afraid. Why don't you go ahead and grab your neighbor by the shoulder or whatever's convenient and say, don't be afraid. God will never leave you nor forsake you. You can rest assured winds may blow. Oh, come on, breakers may dash, but my God, he'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. He's there. You can lie down. Why? Because you know when you get up in the morning that there is going to be more, more peace and more joy. When you get up in the morning, there's going to be more happiness and then no more lack, no more pain, no more sorrow. I I wish I had a witness in this place uh, that understands the principle uh, of reaching. Throw your hands up in the air and reach toward the heavens. Go ahead, don't be shy and begin to talk to him about what you're reaching for. Don't just reach for what you already got. Reach what everybody said you can't have. Reach what society stole from you. Reach with what the enemy tried to steal. Come on, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Reach! Come on, while you're reaching, don't stop. Keep reaching, keep reaching, keep reaching. Keep reaching. Come on, keep reaching. Come on, some of y'all still reaching for the little stuff. Start reaching for the big stuff. Stop reaching for, start reaching for the impossibilities right now. Reach. Reach. Come on, and while you're reaching, the Bible says, I will rid evil beasts out of the land. Neither shall the sword go through your land. The enemy can't even come in. Come on, keep reaching. Keep reaching. Come on. When your enemies come in like a flood, my God will raise up a standard against them. Keep reaching. (laughs) Verse 7 says, and ye shall chase your enemies. Now y'all didn't hear this. He already put them out. 
But now he's telling you, you're going to chase him. No, 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 no. If you got your Bible in this place, you ought to pick it up right now. And ye shall chase your enemies, and they shall fall before you by the sword. Reach your sword out. Point it in the enemy's face. Point at the lying devil know you have no authority here. I come to you with the sword that can cut coming and going. I come to you with the sword, the word of God, the mighty God, the only living God, the word of God. Come on, y'all act like them enemies aren't falling right now. See, some of y'all still reaching into the, the norm. Y'all still in the normality right now. But we need to step it up to the to, to, to beyond that. Uh, amen. To the supernatural. You just said something to the enemy. And you're going to stand there like it didn't happen. You just proclaimed something. You just gave the devil a threat. You're going to act like it didn't have no power. Can I talk to you in this place right now? You better walk in the authority wherewith God has called you. You better stand firm on the foundation of God. Knowing that the enemy has no authority against you. And I need about five of y'all, just five Holy Ghost filled people. If y'all not Holy Ghost filled, just stay where you at. I need five of you up front fast. One, two, three. Come on. I just need five. Amen. We got a bunch. That's fine. Now I need five people. Grab hands. Five of y'all. If you've got five, I need five grabbing hands. One, two, three, four. Okay, we got it. Five. And the Bible. Y'all got y'all ready? Are y'all sure? Because there's some message trying to come in here. And we're going to take it out right now. The Bible says in five of you shall chase a hundred. No, 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 no. Y'all missed this. Y'all missed that opportunity. Five of you shall chase a hundred. Five of you. Now the rest of the church. A hundred. Come on. Of you shall put 10,000 to flight. They're getting out. They're leaving. They're getting out. They're going. They're going. They're going. They're going. They're going. They're going. Going out of your home. Going out of your neighborhood. Going out of your city. Come on. Chase them all the way out. I don't want them ever to come back. Now lift your sword one more time. What's about to happen? You chase them. Now they're going to fall. Shout with a voice of triumph. The day of the enemy has come to an end. Now lay your hand on. Thank you, God bless you. Now lay your hand on yourself. Verse 9 says, I will have respect unto you. God is saying, I will have respect unto you and make you fruitful. Come on, declare it right now. I'm fruitful. I'm fruitful. I'm fruitful. Come on, declare it. I'm fruitful. Come on. Come on. Don't be shy. Come on, you're reaching for this. Come on, I'm fruitful. I'm blessed coming in and I'm blessed going out. Come on. I'm blessed in the city. And I'm blessed in the field. Come on. Come on. He said, God said he's going to do it. Uh, you, you just need to learn to decree it. But, 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 but I, I, it doesn't, I'm not asking you what it looked like. I'm not asking you what it feel like. I'm telling you, you got to learn to reach for this thing right now. Come on. Here comes your multiplication. Here it comes. Here it comes. Your fruit is about to multiply. Come on. And everywhere you go, you're going to establish... His covenant as he establishes his covenant with you. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. 
Come on, come on. Will the blessed people come to the altar right now? If you don't consider yourself blessed, stay where you are. But if, you, if, you, if, you, if you're blessed, come to this altar. Now, if you want to be blessed, come to this altar. If you want to stay blessed, come to this altar. Come on, begin to reach. Come on, don't come up here silent, but come to be reaching. Here it comes, here's a drop. The dead dry grounds were there to direct the flood to the land of the blessed. They don't understand why their stuff isn't working and why it's not growing and why nothing's happening. <laughs> but God has a direction for the flood. There's some fertile ground in this place and there's about to be an overflow. Not a one month overflow. Not a tax season overflow. It's from January, February, March, April, May, June. Come on, y'all better start reaching for it right now. Ah, uh, July, August, here it comes. September, October, November. Come on, December. Come on, the overflow don't stop there. From season to season to season to season. Where everybody else, amen, barns are empty. But your barn is on overflow. Everybody else is in a land of struggle. But you're in a land of plenty. Can I, come on, reach. How far do you want to reach? How high are you willing to jump? How hard? How long? How patient? How much do you want what God has for you? How much are you willing to reach beyond your ability? Reach beyond your strength. Reach beyond your skill set reach beyond your income reach beyond your physicality reach beyond your DNA reach Come on, that's it. You're doing something. Something's breaking right now. Now when you get close, come on, keep reaching. The definition says to touch or grasp. Come on, would you grab hold to what God has? Would you grab hold to his promises? You'll reach for it. Hold it. Nothing can steal it away. Nothing can take it away from you. Nobody can preach it out of you. Nobody can testify against it. No devil can take it away. No family can take it away. No friend can take it away. No enemy can take it away. No education can take it away. No lack of education can take it away. Come on, no bank can take it away. Nobody, nobody can take it away. Why? Because when God gives it, he locks the door. And nobody can open a door that God locks. And when God opens a door, nobody can shut the door that God opens. Reach! Come on, keep on reaching. Ministry. 
Would you reach for somebody? Somebody.